So um, section one point two. Number ten. So it gives a sequence. Um, and it's seven. Next term is forty. Next term is two twenty-three. So right there, we've already eliminated uh, arithmetic and geometric as possibilities. And so I'm kind of reviewing back over one point two as I go with this. Um, And I misspoke there a minute ago. I actually had sent a video link of me going over this material. It wasn't Pearson's videos. I had actually put that up, uh, some Pearson videos up uh, for Math 120 last week. All right, so the last term is 15,085. Okay, so recall again, watch the video. Uh, of me, uh, arithmetic, there's a common difference between any two terms, meaning you take any two successive terms and take the larger minus or the, the next term minus the one preceding it, you always get the same number. Um, example is two, four, six, eight. Okay, I will. So I had Quest for another problem as well. Um, geometric, there's a common ratio. Uh, so this is not arithmetic. If I take any two successive terms, take 2789 minus 916, it's not the same as like a 916 minus 223. Geometric, I would go 40 divided by seven, get that result. And then 223 divided by 40, and I should get the same result and then always down the line. So this is neither arithmetic nor geometric. And then we introduce the method, um, doesn't work for all sequences, but um, works for a good many called method of successive differences. And so, and you'll be told on, and this problem says, use the method of successive differences to determine the next number in the given sequence. Um, now, it gave me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven terms. It wants the eighth term, what would be after this. So method of successive differences. I'm gonna go through and find the difference of all successive terms, that is 40 minus seven. So that one we can do fairly quick, that's 33. And let me grab a calculator. So that will get one upstairs. All right, so then I would go 223 minus 40. That difference is 183. Then 916 minus 223 is 693. 2789 minus 916 is 1873. 6952 minus 2789 is 4163. 15085 minus 6952 8133. Now, what we're looking for is uh, most of the time we'll get a row here of all the same number. And once I do, I can build backwards to find that next term. Um, though it can occasionally just be a pattern in and of itself. I see a pattern and I can use that pattern to build backwards, uh, which is what happens actually in number 11. 
Um, so I'm just going to keep doing this. And what I'm looking for again, most of the time is a row of all the same number. So I'll just keep at it. So 183 minus 33, 150. 693 minus 183, 510. 1873 minus 693, uh, 11, one, I'm sure I don't think, misread, 1180, 1180. 4,163 minus 1873, 2290, and 8133 minus 4163, 3970, and keep going. Five ten minus one fifty is three sixty. One one eight zero minus five ten six seventy two two nine zero minus one one eight zero. 1,110 and 3970 minus 2290, uh, 1,680. And we'll keep going. 670 minus 360, 310. 1110 minus 670 is 440. 11, no, excuse me, 1680 oh. minus 1110 is 570. And I think we're about there. If we do the next two, uh, and I'm going to get what? 440 minus 310 is 130. And 570 minus 440 is 130. And that's what we we're looking for, that common row. So once I have it, um, I could actually find as many terms now of the sequence as I wanted uh, by building backwards. So I would assume the next number here is 130. And so I would go 570 plus 130, building backwards, would give me 700. And then 1680 plus 700 is 2380, excuse me. And 2380 plus 3970, it's 6,350. Then 6,350 plus 8133. Okay is 14,483 and 15,085 plus 14,483 is 29,568 which would be our eighth term of the sequence now I'm going to actually punch that in 
29568. And hoorah, it is right. So the one thing about this, particularly one like we're working right here, um, you have to pay attention to detail. I mean, every, because you've got to do a lot of subtraction. And so if you punch in one miss, you know, one digit wrong um, or write down one digit wrong, it will throw the whole thing off. And um, so uh, most important is just knowing first the method. Then um, if, you know, if you get, when you know the method, you get one wrong, um, generally the best thing to do is work backwards, start from the beginning and then try to work backwards to catch the mistake um, if, if you do have one. All right, any questions on number 10? All right, any questions on method of success of differences in general? All right, just had a request for number eight. Back up to number eight and turn the page. So, to number eight, which says use differences to find a pattern of the sequence. All right, seven, ten and 16, and 30, and 57, and 102, and 170. All right, so again, we're after the um, eighth term. So numbers are gonna be a little more user-friendly, not quite as big as the one we just did, but the process will be the same. Uh, 10 minus 7 is 3. 16 minus 10 is 6. 30 minus 16 um, would be what? Uh, 14. 57 minus 30 would be 27. 102 minus 57 is 45. And 170 minus 102 is 68. And we'll do it again. So 6 minus 3 is 3. 14 minus 6 um, is 8. 27 minus 14 is 13. 45 minus 27 is 18. And 68 minus 45 is 23. And right there, you can see fairly quickly, I think, that now when I do this row, 8 minus 3 is 5. 13 minus 8 is 5. 18 minus 13 is 5 and 23 minus 18 is five. So I've got that common row that I'm looking for. Then we'll build backwards. Assuming that the next term is five, uh, I'm gonna go five plus 23, that would be 28. Uh, 28 plus 68 is 96. And once uh, the 96 plus then 170 uh, is 266. That would be the eighth term. Questions on that one? All right, um, we'd also had a request or number 11. Now 11 um, always, always gets asked. Um, it's a little bit different. Um, 
does tell you to use the method of successive differences. Um, but it's got a little twist. So number 11, still 1.2. All right, so what you have here um, talks about setting a, a, this up, this, this particular sequence. It gives a, and I'm not gonna draw all these, but it gives a circle and says, hey, you have a circle, got one identified point on. And then that's the first circle. That looks like a center. It's got the number one in there, but there's your first one. Second circle, two identified points, and play connect the dot. And what it's really after is the number of regions that you're going to get every time you play, you put a third point, we play connect dot. So with the first two circles it gives, there's one region there for one point. Two points, you actually have two regions. There's one region, there's two regions. So if you hit continue, it actually goes up through uh, six circles. I'm not gonna draw all of them. Um, I just make a mess of it. But the third one gives you three points. And then plays connected up between those three points. Well, what you get, and I it uh, should have drawn these bigger. One, two, three, four regions. Um, and it numbers the regions when you look at the, the circles in the picture. So that's the sequence, the number of regions obtained by this. So the first term of the sequence is one. The second term is two. The third one is four, four different regions. So you would go to on the fourth circle, put four dots. And play, you connect them all up at, at, like you could do a square, but you also could do these diagonals like that. And what you end up with, if you count up all the regions, is eight. Now, the fifth circle, which I'm not going to try to draw, but if you put five dots and connected all the dots in every way possible, you would have 16 regions. And at that point, it looks like this sequence um, is geometric. I mean, if that's all I gave you, you would assume geometric. Two divided by one is two. Four divided by two is two. Eight divided by four is two. 16 divided by eight is two. It looks like it's geometric, but so it's a circle again here, five dots, and connect them up every way you can. Six circle, six dots, and they draw this out for you. Um, and then number all the regions, and they even put the last number in red. This is so when you play connect the dot with in every way possible with the six points on that circle, you actually get 31, which boom, it's not geometric now. We know for sure. What it wants you to do is find the next term of the sequence. Now, I, as I said, I get to, to the fifth circle and I put my five points on the circle, then try to play connected dot. It, it turns into a mess. It's a real mess if I put six dots with the 30, forming 31 regions. Uh, it's going to be an absolute disaster if I try to draw out the seventh, but you can use the method of six. If you just had this sequence and that's all I gave you, didn't even say anything about where the terms were coming from. Uh, you, once you hit this one, you know, it's not geometric, but I could still use method of successive differences to find the next term. Two minus one is two. Four minus two is uh, two, and I don't know why I went two minus one is two other than I looked, hopefully I said one. Two minus one is one. Four minus two is two. Eight minus four is four. 16 minus eight is eight. 
and 31 minus 16 is 15. Okay, so uh, we do it again. Now, this is the one, as I said, normally we're looking for a common row, like all the numbers are the same. But it could also be the, that I find a pattern. 2 minus 1 is 1. 4 minus 2 is 2. 8 minus 4 is 4. And 15 minus 8 is 7. But when I go to one more row here, 2 minus 1 is 1. 4 minus 2 is 2. 7 minus 4 is 3. 1, 2, 3. So I, what I have here is not a, a row of common numbers all the same, but I see a pattern. We use inductive reasoning to say, well, one, two, three, the next term is what, four. And then as always build backwards. So that four plus seven uh, would be 11. 11 plus 15 would be 26. And 26 plus 31 uh, would be 57. And there would be your next term of, these are just commas, uh, 57 in this particular sequence. Questions on that one? Number 11. Okay. Um, any other problems? Uh, I have touched on uh, uh, and oh, incidentally, on this particular problem, you have to do this again. Uh, it asks for the number of regions determined by eight points. We just figured up the number of regions determined by seven points or the seventh term of the sequence. So to answer, to finish off this problem, you would have to do this again. Uh, assume the next one is five, you get 16. 16 plus, six, uh, 16 plus 26 would be 42. And then 42, uh, 42 plus 57 uh, would be 99. And that would be the eighth term of that particular sequence. Okay. So again, I touched on geometric sequence and arithmetic. Uh, the only thing we haven't talked about today that was in that lecture uh, video that I sent uh, was the sequences um, that are called the figure of numbers, the triangular numbers, square numbers, pentagonal numbers, uh, hexagonal, heptagonal, octagonal. And then there's problems uh, dealing with those and nobody's asked a question on them yet. So, and that's fine if, if we're all good. Um, so about half of us have gotten in there and worked problems. Um, so we are gonna have to play a little catch up because um, I am going to go on and uh, assign the next section. So before I do, and it won't take a long time to go through uh, 1.3, uh, what I need to say on 1.3. So we have time to, to answer questions if you have any. All right. I'm going to give you one second to, to ponder that. I can think if there's any others you want to want me to go over. Uh, and I'm going to grab a cup of coffee. I'll be right back.
All right. So no questions. 1.2. Okay. If not, um, there is a quiz that goes with one, one, and one, two, um, which I'm going to assign at the end of class. I wanted you to take it before Monday. Um, and then in addition, the last section, uh, big section, we're going to cover 1.3. One point three is about problem solving. Now, the only way to uh, learn how to solve problems is going to sound a little flippant. I don't mean it to be, uh, but is to solve problems. You just have to get in there and do it. And uh, this red girl from start class. All right, so um, <clears throat> so in the mid forties, there was Hungarian mathematician last name Folia. P-O-L-Y-A. He wrote a book called How to Solve It. Um, and you can condense his approach to basically four steps. To keep it simple. So how to solve a problem. One. Before you can solve the problem, you've got to understand the problem. You got to know what it is you're looking for. So understanding what it is that you're after. Once you understand, now you're going to devise a plan. Come up with a plan. We're going to talk more about this here in a second. Three, once you've got your plan, Carry it out, run it. And once you have carried it out, probably the most important step here, look back and check. I think that. Understand, plan, carry out, look back. And you get to look back if, if you did not get to where you wanted to be in solving the problem, then you're going to go to number two and revise your plan and carry that out until you finally get there. But it's that's a it's a four step simple approach. Now. Let's talk about plans. We come out of generally most of us where the kind of application problems that we have that we are used to seeing uh, are algebraic. That is, we, we have an algebra class, we learn a particular algebraic concept, um, then we get some application and we model generally equations or inequalities uh, to solve said problem. And it leads us to believe that that's the only way to solve a particular problem that, that is mathematic in, 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 um, in nature. So the problems that we're going to be looking at here in this section, and it's basically just, a, 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 I think there are 21 of them, a bunch of problems that we have to, to you know, 21 problems we're going to have to solve 
maybe one of them you can write an equation for. Uh, most of them, we're going to use other strategies. And so uh, jotting down different kinds of strategies that we could employ, uh, make a table or chart. Uh, look for a pattern. We've definitely been doing a lot of work on pattern recognition this semester. Um, definitely will be a few problems there in the section 1.2 where we do this. Solve a simpler um, problem. Simpler, similar problem. Problem is so overwhelmingly complex. So let's kind of look at one that's similar that is that is accessible. If it's geometric. Uh, draw a sketch. Draw a sketch. Um, Look for a series of what examples or a series of observation and use inductive reasoning. Um, of course, oldie but goody. Write an equation and solve it. Um, apply a formula. There's another one that I guarantee there will be a couple problems, at least one that I can think of right off the top of my head. Um, work backwards. Next two, and I'm kind of out of room here. Let's see if we can squeeze everything in here. Uh, guess and check. I mean, this one, the subtle difference between these two on this one, I'm really using that kind of uh, 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 in, intuition, or gut feeling. And I'm just guessing and check my guess, see if I hit the target. Um, then one very similar, but trial and error. So it's a little bit, you know, I'm, I'm not exactly just guessing out of, out of thin air. Um, so I've got some, you know, some reason why I'm going to try a particular thing and try it. It's a mistake, but then it gives me, okay, now let's try this next one, so on and so forth. So those two kind of go hand in hand. Um, the last two, sometimes it's just common sense. And the last one, uh, look for a catch. Catch problems. Now, uh, we get to a test, there won't be any catch problems on there. There aren't any catch problems in the, uh, in the homework either, but it, we talk about a catch problem. Um, an example of that might be, uh, you know, some, some months have 30 days and others have 31. How many have 28? And then, of course, the answer is all of them have 28. It's a catch problem. Um, you know, how far does a dog run in the woods? Eh, halfway. It's got to turn around and come home. So, um, the, you know, to me, I always call them the, you know, silly problems. So, um, but there's a plethora of, of ways to, that, that we can attack problems way beyond, you know, just, uh, writing an equation. So what I want to do now, um,
is go over a few of the kind of problems you're going to be tackling here between now and Monday on 1.3. Um, Okay, yeah, definitely want to try to um, do an example one like this. All right, so here is a, a problem that seems impossible to start. All right, so this is an example. There's a couple problems where this comes up. So right, you, you want to take this kind of approach. But here's the problem. What is the unit's digit of three to the power of 497. All right, step one of problem solving, understanding the problem. Um, what's units digit, right? That is one's place. So if I give you a number of just you know, 5,684, four is the units digit. Whatever's occupying one's place, the very first digit. So that one. Now, you know, what is three to the power of 497? Well, that is um, that is multiply three with itself 497 times. So if I were to, you know, problem solving strategy, my first strategy would just be grab my calculator and go three to the power of 497. All right, um, hopefully you can say this, it's an older 83 model. Uh, all right, you see where it says error what? Overflow, so I just punched in on my calculator three to the power of 497. It's too big. It won't even put it in scientific notation and, and round it off. It's just too big. And that was an 83. Um, if I put that in my most up-to-date 84, I'd still get the same thing. So that's not an option. Now, another strategy here might be just simply, you know what, three times three is nine, and nine times three is 27, and 27 times three is 81, and Maybe next week you're, you would get to the answer, assuming you didn't make an arithmetic mistake along the way. And arithmetic would just get absolutely hideous. Um, so uh, we need to come up with another plan. So let me just throw this out there. You know, I wrote down these problem solving strategies. What one seems foremost here? We have a very complicated problem on our hands. So which one of those strategies that I went over, and I'll turn the page back. There, I guess I had created a bunch of pages. Which one of these guys? Uh, solve a simpler problem. That's it, all right? You get one something, you know, so complicated, let's back up and look at a similar, simpler problem. There. So we'll come back to here. Now, on those problem solving strategies, it's not that you just pick one. You might have one that's predominantly, okay, this is my strategy, but the others are going to come into play. Um, looking for a pattern almost always gets used. Uh, use inductive reasoning, so on and so forth. So uh, but this one, 
definitely, I'm going to solve a simpler problem. I'm going to be creating a table. I'm going to be looking for a pattern and I'm looking for a pattern. I'm probably going to use some inductive reasoning on this. All right, so let's do, let's just make it real simple. Nothing be simpler than three to the first. I can do that. And then three squared. That's nine. And three cubed, that's 27. Three times three times three. Three to the fourth is 81. Now, when I go to three to the fifth, that would just be 81 times three. So that's 243. I'm going to keep going here. And it's going to be 243 times three. Uh, I'm going to get 729. 729 times 3. So it's be 3 to the 7th. Uh, I'm going to get 2187. 3 to the 8th, 2187 times 3. 6,531. Now, keep going. Um, well, forever and ever and ever. And I've got, you know, I've got these four rows. And then I'm looking at it. Eventually, I would get to 3 to the power of 497. But let's make an observation. I know I'm looking for what the units digit, what's occupying one's place. So if it's a single digit, that is one's place. So units digit of three, units digit of nine, units digit of seven. The next one has the units digit of one. And look at the next column down. Notice it is again, three, nine, seven, what, one. And if I stop now, really kind of think this out, what I'm seeing here, like if I went to three to the ninth, whatever that may be, I'm gonna multiply this by three. And when I go on that, you know, so if I were multiplying 6,531 by hand times three, the very first multiplication would be three times one. It's going to give me a units digit of three. And when I get to my next one here for three to the tenth, um, I'm going to be multiplying three times three on that initial product which is going to give me nine. And then I would multiply the three through the rest, but the units digit would have to be nine. And then three times nine is 20, what, seven. So whatever this number of three to the 11th works out to be, it's going to have a units digit of seven. And three times seven, again, I would try to jump to three to the 12th, uh, would have to be three times seven is 21. And so my units digit of whatever that number is, three to the 12th, the units digit would have to be one. And so what I've now at least done is whittled it down to only, I had 10 possibilities because we have 10 digits. I now know the answer is one of these four. It's gotta be what, three or nine or seven or one. So three to any power will have, um, if I expand it out, multiply it out, one's place will have to be either three, nine, seven, or one. And so it's really a question of figuring out what row does three to the 497 belong to? Once I figured out what row goes in, then I've got my answer. All right, so to figure that out, what you want to do is take the power, which is 497, and divide it by how many times this repeats. It repeats every what? Four. So you're going to divide four, because it's repeating every four, into 497. Now, what we're actually, I don't care about the quotient. What I care about is the remainder. If I take 497 and I divide it by four, it will go 124 times. Now, 124 times four is 496. I 
It says my remainder was one. So basically, so my R is one here. Now, when you divide on a calculator, of course, it doesn't tell you the remainder. Like what I actually got was 124.25. Uh, it always, if it doesn't divide evenly, you get a, a number in, in, de in decimal form. The decimal part, that is the point and then to the right on a calculator is the decimal form of a fraction, remainder over divisor. That is whatever your remainder is over what you're dividing by. So I got 0.25. So I see point, you know, if I divide a number by four and I get something 0.25, I know the remainder of the division was one. One fourth is 0.25. If you get 0.5, then your remainder was two. And if you get 0.75, your remainder is three. If you don't get a decimal part at all, it went evenly. And what I can do now, how I can use that remainder to determine which row I would land on. If I get a remainder of one, I go, it goes in the first row. If I get a remainder of two, it goes in the second row. If I get a remainder of three, it goes in the third row. A uh, remainder of zero, it went evenly, it goes in the fourth row. So my answer here, what is the units digit of three to the power of 497? It's three. Because I got that remainder of one. So I know three to the 497 would go in that first row. And there are a couple like that. Um, that you'll use this kind of technique, solving a similar, simpler problem. Questions on this one? All right. Um, okay. Uh, I'm gonna actually turn back because I cut a bunch of pages. I cannot possibly draw this next picture um, very well. I'll do my best. Um, this is number 17. I'm basically giving you a hint. I'm not going to work this out. There is no, there's only one answer to this question. So I don't want to give away the answer. But I want to give you a hint of how to do it. If you take a polygon, a regular polygon, let's say a pentagon in this case, and you connect up all non-adjacent vertices. You form, in this case, what's called a pentagram inside there. That's that star shape I see. If you took a hexagon and connected up all non-adjacent vertices, you would get a hexagram and a heptagon connect up all non-adjacent vertices on the interior, you get a heptagram, so on and so forth. So it gives you this figure here. But the question it asks is how many triangles are there in this figure? All right, so what I wanna give you is a tip of how to figure this one out. So there is no formula. So I'll knock that out for you right off the bat. There's no formula that's gonna answer this question. Um, it's, a, it's really pattern recognition. So again, I can't really draw a, a pentagon with all sides at the same length. So it looks a little askew, uh, but when you get to the problem, you'll actually see it you know, uh, as it should be. Um, but what you can determine though, because it is a regular pentagon inside here, for each unique triangle I can find, there's actually gotta be five of them. Five, one, two, three, four, five. As an example, here's a unique triangle. Notice there are one, two, three, four, five of them. Here's a triangle. One, two, three, four, five of them. Um, see the one here in the middle? And there would be five of those. So your hint? Find all 
unique triangles. Once you do that, how many ever unique triangles you can find, multiply that by five, and that'll be the total number of triangles. All right, so that's as much as I can say about that right now. Um, There's another one that deals kind of in the same vein, but with rectangles. Um, yeah. So there are 21 problems in this section. Um, a lot of them have, show me an example. Some of them do not. Uh, I definitely would expect questions on Monday. Uh, dealing with this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and assign the quiz. This goes over 1.1 1 .1 and 1 1.2. Uh, so today is um, the 22nd. So this will be due on the 27th. Let's do this. It is assigned, and I'm assigning 1.3. That will also be due the 27th. Okay, so they are assigned. Now, on Monday, uh, I would expect that there will be some questions from 1.3. I have that expectation. Um, so get in and look at every problem in there. Uh, and the ones that you can't figure out, please bring those back to you, back to me uh, to ask on Monday to work. Uh, there is one little extra section I will cover on Monday, uh, just dealing with uh, something we call measures of central tendency. Um, probably most of you are familiar with what we call mean, median, and mode. Um, so it won't take long to go over that. So we'll have plenty of time to take questions on Monday. And um, I will be then reviewing back through and we'll be assigning a test on this unit and ready to proceed on to set theory. So um, a few of you, again, about half of you got in to work 1.2. Uh, about half of you have not got to 1.2. So those that did not get to 1.2 yet, you have a lot of, a lot of work to do between now and Monday uh, trying to catch up. Um, if you need some help outside uh, class time, uh, shoot me an email and, and I can make time to help you out uh, to go over some problems if you're needing to, to, to play catch up. But uh, do not want you to get too far behind. Um, it could turn into an avalanche. So uh, that's your task, uh, to try to work up through uh, 1.3. Uh, again, as many problems as you can do. Uh, and then also, I will take questions again on 1.2. Uh, again, some of you had not gotten to it, and I had no questions on figure numbers. So um, Mondays, are, my plan is to do, again, uh, something uh, uh, new topic, but it won't take long to cover it 